Okay, now we're at a point where we have a flat face and we have to ask the question, what were they thinking? Like, this is just, this is unbelievable that this is someone's logo. How on earth could they have done something like this? Okay, the first example I wanna use is Pinterest. Now, Pinterest is an app, is a platform, is a remarkable, unique social network. Um, for a lot of designers, whether you're an architect, an interior designer, a graphic designer, Pinterest is a key part of finding inspiration. So Pinterest, in a lot of ways, is a hub of all things new and cool. Now, a lot like Airbnb, which we talked about earlier, Pinterest, because they were so cool and so unique and different, they could kind of do whatever they wanted to do. And their first logo, if everyone remembers when they download the app, was, you know, like cursive, said Pinterest. Like no one does cursive in modern day branding. And their logo mark was a P that had a nice little loop or something. There was like a needle. It was crafty and folksy when nobody would have the courage to be crafty and folksy. So from the beginning, I was fascinated with Pinterest as an app, Pinterest as a brand, and Pinterest as a hub of new cool ideas. So a few years ago, Pinterest did a grand and rebrand and it sent shockwaves through designer communities because no one could figure out why the heck they did what they did. They dropped the signature font and they replaced it with an awkward, boring, sans serif black font that just said Pinterest. Why this was so strange is it seems like they were following a playbook from a non-creative, non-cool, non-tech company. So when in doubt, if you wanna shake off your folksy roots, you know, that no one likes your dumb stars or whatever it is, you go with something clean and modern, choose some sort of Helvetica or Ariel if you have to, something like that. But that's the playbook you use when you're not a cool company and you're trying to keep up with some sort of modern, as simple aesthetic, you know? It's not the playbook you use when you're already the cool kid. You're supposed to show us the places where we're supposed to be going, not where we've already been. So throughout designer forums online and conversations I had with designer friends, we were like kind of low key whispering like, what the heck was Pinterest thinking? And none of us came up with a good idea. None of us, none of us could come up with a good idea. So regard, this was my prediction at the time. I said, someone did this to solve a problem that no one can see. Therefore, I think the designers in the company will win over, this will go away and we'll never see it again. It's as if it never happened. So when you go on the website today, if you go on the Pinterest.com or you look at the Pinterest app, the word Pinterest is nowhere to be seen. I don't even think you can find it. So those big black goofy letters that say Pinterest, those are gone. So it happened. We don't know why it's no longer here. Now let's look at Payway. Now, a lot of people like the uh, restaurant Payway because when they really started, they offered something cool and different. They offered Chinese food, Japanese food, you know, food from Thailand and from all these places that may have had some similarities, but also some unique flavor palettes and cultural differences. So if you just wanted to have food from that region in creative ways, Payway was a good option. Um, Payway also kind of pioneered, pioneered this idea of quick serve. So, you know, it's this fast, casual thing. It's not a fast food restaurant with a tacky drive through and a huge menu that's obnoxious and blinking, but you know, some select dishes that are affordable and fun. You order at the counter, they bring it to your table. You know, I think that's why Payway was like the ultimate lunch spot for casual workplace uh, lunches is because it was fun and it was cool. And somewhere along the way, Payway, well, let's talk about their early brand. So we had the words pay and way. Um, I think if you had to choose to describe the font with words, it would be like, okay, it's um, not American. It's kind of leaning towards like the East, some part of Asia, but like, it's like, okay, that's not from here. And then their logo was some expressive kind of yoga dude or something um, with a brush lettering, you know, type designs, so words fail, but when you look at the Payway logo, you're like, oh, let's go there. So this kind of logo got tired. It wasn't working anymore. It seemed a little bit trite. So Payway was, you know, due for a rebrand. So I was excited to see what they were gonna do. But what they did do was they chose a playbook that I think is very similar to what, Mc, uh, not McDonald's, but Burger King did back in the day. Burger King in the 1990s was really losing traction with young men. And young men, um, if you can get them hooked on your burgers when they're in their teens, they're gonna keep eating it into their 20s and some of them even in their 30s and 40s. So you gotta go for that young male demographic and that's what Burger King decided to do. And they did it in a lot of ways, but one of them is they had this Burger King dude. So it's like a guy dressed like a king. 
and he had this big helmet head that was like, had a permagrin on it and it was really goofy and chaotic. So that's what Burger King did. And they had a lot of funny commercials of him doing extreme sports and saying snarky things. And then this transferred over to, I think, uh, what's the other company? It's the dude with the big ping pong ball head. It's the same general idea, which is we need a mascot caricature of our customers. And then that's gonna help us communicate who we are. So Payway ended up going with this. They decided that they're gonna have a, a tiger as their dude. And this tiger was gonna say snarky things on Twitter, which is ridiculous because I don't know, are there 12 year olds on Twitter retweeting this stuff? Uh, but he was gonna say cool, clever stuff and he was gonna make puns and do this kind of thing. So at this point, I'm like, whatever, Payway, you can do what you want. But where I really, really lost faith in Payway is when I actually looked at their logo. Now, tiger logos can actually look really cool. I mean, a tiger is symmetrical. People know tigers when they see them. The Payway tiger is weird because it actually doesn't look like a tiger. When you look at it, it looks like a house cat. It looks like a house cat now with stripes but a house cat that's been in a gnarly fight, it's been slashed and it's been left for dead. So welcome to Payway, can I take your order? Am I particularly harsh on Payway? Yes, I'm throwing a lot of shade at a company that a lot of people loved and they're just so utterly confused of all the missteps they've made along the way. But I think what really went wrong here is that someone who was smart, who knew what was up, did not raise their hand in the boardroom. Like there was such groupthink and momentum to go in a certain direction for whatever reason that no one raised their hand and said, hey, that tiger logo doesn't look like a tiger, okay? Here's what's very peculiar. They hired a top design agency to get this project done. I don't remember the name, but it's like one of those three name agencies, sounds like a law firm. And there are some brilliant designers who've done some brilliant work, but somewhere along the way, either Payway was broken, the design firm was broken, their relationship was broken, the economy was broken, something went wrong here. Now, we'll never know if this logo will lead to the end of Payway. Um, we don't know, there, no one takes a vote on this every election year, do you like Payway's logo or not? But when I see Payway as a company, when I go into their interiors and it's like these me too, clean, modern interiors, when I look at this goofy tiger who's out there tweeting, making snarky stuff, when I even look at their, um, their, uh, their slogans, you know, we deliver fresh house made ingredients, that's the Payway way. This stuff is just so cheesy and goofy. I look at a company that felt, I felt like had a head start and they just lost their way along the way. So the lesson here is if deep in your gut and your mind, you sense that something's wrong, I don't care how well you're paid or how not well you're paid, where you are within the company, always know that your opinion matters. You can raise your hand and say, uh, that tiger looks like a house cat, that's awkward, right? And I think we need to have more courage to ask those hard questions. And even if you're flying off the handle with your hard questions, a smart design agency, a smart executive of your company should be able to take your feedback, wrestle through that topic, and bring about truth and understanding and clarity and strategy. No awkward question, no difficult question should ever derail smart people heading in the right direction. So that's all I have to say about that. Thank you for your time today. Um, if you wanna learn more about logos, branding and design, uh, I'm gonna put some links in the description about some of the work, some of the blogs I've written, some of the videos that I've made that uh, you know take some of these concepts and take them next level. And if you have any questions about this kind of stuff or if you disagree with me, if you absolutely love that Payway logo, I need to know who you are and we need to not be friends anymore. So let me know who you are in the comments and this will be it for our friendship. Just kidding, but I'm not. Catch you next time.